My name is Karen Daly. I work here in Johnstone Castle as a researcher. And um, this board that myself and David are going to talk to you today about just outlines what the day is all about. You know, the, the, the challenges facing you know society and the farming community are huge, but there are plenty of opportunities out there to meet those challenges. And we have very easy to adopt and well researched um, mitigation measures and technologies that you can take home with you today if you're not already doing them. And you'll see, you'll get a flavour for what's coming through the research, what's in the pipeline in terms of technologies for tomorrow. So you're probably all well aware of hearing about climate change and you're he you know, you've know you heard it on the news and you've heard it, heard it on the radio and you're well aware of the targets that have been set. Um, but you know a lot of what we hear about uh, climate change comes from greenhouse gas emissions which are on the increase. Um, another thing, another challenge that faces us in Ireland is water quality decline and the latest stats from the EPA are showing that our water quality is in decline and that's primarily driven by phosphates and nitrates um, coming from diffuse sources, so large areas of land rather than point sources. Um, there's a huge move now um, from the Commission to try and protect and enhance biodiversity. So that's, you know, biodiversity on your farm and you'll hear about that today on the open day, what you can do to protect biodiversity and enhance it in terms of hedgerows and the multiple uh, co-benefits that come with that in terms of trapping and capturing carbon. So there's a lot of challenges out there, but there are plenty of opportunities and we've done the research and we can tell you that a lot of the ready to go uh, technologies that are you can adopt today are on display and on demo. And there's advisors on the ground here today in the KT village that you can talk to about how to adopt them on your farm and make them work for you and if they suit your farm enterprise. So don't be afraid to come forward and speak to people about you know, have any, any kind of question, you know, understand the research behind the technology, but understand the practicalities of implementing that on your farm and making sure it works for you and works for your farm system. And some of these, in, an example of some of these might be technologies you're well aware of, you know, you've heard about soil fertility, getting the N, P and K right, um, getting lime requirement right, getting your soil pH right, and it might sound like a, an old technology it's been around for a long time we've been talking about it for you know decades we talk about it every year with our soil fertility campaign but it is a technology that can mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and water quality if you get your soil fertility right in terms of you know your lime requirement optimizing your ph you, everything else is it, it falls into place so once your soil ph is correct the soil biology falls into place, the soil chemistry falls into place, and it's good for the soil structure and soil physics. So it's also a soil health measure as well as just as a productivity measure. And when you get your nutrients in balance, so you're really only feeding nutrients to the soil that it meets the crop demand, you're protecting water quality on your farm. And the small things that you can do on your farm have a wider effect at catchment scale. And that then trickles down into some of the stats that come out on the water quality side in terms of national statistics. So, you know, be, be very clear that the small measures you implement at field and farm scale can have a, a greater effect at much wider scales. So if you get those right, you'll protect water quality and greenhouse gas emissions. Sowing clover is another measure that's been around that we've, uh, we're here to talk to you about today if you haven't already adopted it. There's plenty of advice on the ground here today about how to do that and about the benefits of that um, in terms of you know your nitrogen use efficiency and reducing your dependence on chemical and fossil based nitrogen. Uh, protected urea is another product that we've done a lot of research on um, in terms of switching that over uh, uh, in, uh, uh, instead of can. It's a product that can reduce nitrogen emissions or greenhouse gas emissions and there's advice here today about how to how to how the technology works and how to implement that as well. Um, there's a lot of technologies that are coming through the pipeline. Um, there's some boards and some stands on how to farm under zero N, and you'll you'll see some of that out and about in the grassland village. So the the day is structured around a number of villages and a number of stands within each village, and there's a researcher and an advisor on each of the stands. So there's a grassland village, an environment village, livestock, 
And then there's the advisory in KT, so the knowledge transfer people are here today as well to talk to you about the practicalities of implementing some of the things that we're talking about. Um, so, you know, you'll hear about reducing methane emissions by, you know, tweaking animal breeding and feed additives that can be fed to reduce methane emissions and also increasing the productivity of, of animals in terms of the livestock. So you'll hear about that research and that's a, that's a technology that will be in place in the very near future as well. Energy, energy production and some of the technical aspects in, in terms of measuring carbon dioxide emissions, you'll see the Eddie Covariance Tower when you, when you work through these stands, how we're measuring carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the live stream of that is on demo for you, for, for you to hear about today. And Dave will touch on carbon farming. You'll see a lot of uh, uh, talking about soil carbon. So don't be afraid to ask questions about what is carbon sequestration? What do we mean when we talk about that? What do we mean when we talk about carbon stocks and carbon storage? So all of that research is ongoing in Johnstown today and there's a soil health uh, section over here on the, on the open day to, to help you understand what that means in terms of the, the research, but what it means then in terms of carbon farming, how you might be able to use that for your benefit into the future. And um, the decision support systems that we have in Chagas like NMP Online are here today to talk to you about how, you know, how, again, it's about coming back to balancing your nutrients and your soil fertility on the farm and how you get that into a decision support system to try and optimize your fertilizer use. And even distribution of fertilizers around the farm so you don't end up with fields that are in surplus or in deficiency and um, so getting the, those balances right so there's plenty of um uh, groups here today to talk to you about in terms of the practical measures the asap group here the, the agricultural sustainability support program are here and they focus on water quality protection on farms so again it's about the small things that you can do that you know, don't interfere with productivity, but can protect water quality and can protect um, against greenhouse gas emissions. The Signpost Farm Programme, you'll see them on the last stand on, on this line. And you'll see though some of the technologies that we're adopting and researching actually in use. So you'll see them working on the ground on, on commercial farms around Ireland. So you get to talk to them about how they actually work and how they can be integrated. Uh, into farm system and different farming systems. So with that, I'll hand you over to David. Hi everybody, um, my name is David Wall. I'm a researcher, a uh, colleague of Karen here at Johnstown Castle. And I suppose, as Karen has outlined, the challenges are many, but we have a lot of opportunities here um, uh, on show, but you have a lot of opportunities on your farm, I suppose, to de-risk it, make it more resilient, uh, for the future and also to show that you're doing your bit or the sector is doing its bit uh, to improve um, greenhouse gas reductions um, to be uh, I suppose meet the challenges in terms of biodiversity water quality uh, etc we know that the last 12 to 24 months have been challenging on farms in terms of input prices and that's more than likely set to continue in terms of high fertilizer prices into 2023 and who knows how far into the future and at this point i suppose it behoves us as uh, farmers and um, as researchers they're working to support you as farmers to be able to de-risk your business or help you de-risk your business, move away maybe from fossil fuel fertilizer as an example. And what technologies can you put in place on your farm uh, so that you don't have to use as much nitrogen um, for, it, for an example. If we move forward then in terms of, of those technologies and showing that we are doing the right things, that we are making our, our system more resilient, You'll see that in your bottom line. So there's many opportunities there in terms of reducing input prices, making more money and keeping more of the money in your, in your pocket in terms of the bottom line. But also there that we're able to show that what we're doing is making a difference in terms of the environment, which the rest of society, that's a service that you're providing for the rest of society and you should get paid for that service that you're providing. So there's an opportunity as another income stream on your farm. If you're producing that good in service, it's not milk, meat, milk, grain, fodder that you're used to producing. 
you can still produce that and earn your, your income from that. But there's more income generation uh, side streams that can be uh, um, brought into your business through schemes. The new uh, Agri Environmental Scheme Acres, our advisory colleagues will be talking about that down there, so find out where and what measures you can implement on your farm and how much you can get paid for those. Obviously anybody that's been involved in the past in terms of reps, in terms of AS, GLOSS, etc., you're used to audit in terms of somebody going in and checking, have you done that measure before you get paid? That's going to be a lot more into the future and as Irish farmers and as ag agricultural sector, we're going to have to be able to, to stick our chests out and say, we are doing it, we're doing the right things, and we're protecting the environment, etc. at the same time as producing high quality food. And, you know, commanding that narrative will be so important in the future so that we're not on the back foot and always explaining uh, when people are saying we're doing wrong, which, which we, 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 we may not be, be doing. Marketing is going to be another key area there that if we have the sustainable food production, which we do have, we should be able to get a premium market for that food and you as farmers get paid for producing that food over and above ordinary uh, lower quality food that might be coming in from, from elsewhere. So again, there is an opportunity there. Again, you're used to the Origin Green and the Board B audit uh, in terms of, of that quality food. And ultimately, some, of the, some more farmers will be go, going uh, down the organic um, farming route. But as conventional farmers in the group, there is principles there that you can apply on your conventional farm, you're not calling yourself organic, but they're perf perfectly good ways of uh, producing food in a sustainable way, uh, applying the same principles. The new kid in town will be carbon farming, so getting paid for the carbon that you're taking out of the atmosphere and storing in your soils, in your hedges, or in your trees. And big business and the energy sector is willing to pay farmers and pay landowners for that service that you're providing into the future. It's beginning to be developed there. Thing, people like Rabobank, people, uh, big companies like Bayer, etc., are jumping straight into this and beginning to get the business models there to be able to pay farmers for what they're doing in that respect. So you will learn about what practices, what measures you can implement on your farm to be able to sequester more carbon and ultimately generate a higher income stream from that carbon that you're sequestering on your farm. You're standing in a field of multi-species swards here today. As the first field, it just happens to be that way. Those swards can sequester more carbon because they have plantain and chicory in them, which are shoving nutrients deeper into the soil where they're truly locked up and stored. Also, they uh, afford a drought resilience. So if the climate changes into the future, we're getting more droughty weather in the summers. At the moment there, you can have a look around. Those multi-species swards have forged ahead over the last month, whereas some of the other swards on the farm are lagging behind and look a bit more like a green desert. So again, there is opportunities there to de-risk your business in terms of changes in weather, changes in climate, etc. If we move to the take home messages from this first stand, the challenges are many. However, let's try to turn those into opportunities. Opportunities to generate more income and different income streams. Opportunities to reduce input costs and opportunities to be smarter in terms of how we're working, in terms of labor efficiency, in terms of efficiency of nutrients uh, that you're bringing in and ultimately uh, making your business more profitable and more manageable for you as farmers. Early action is, is going to be needed. We do to, need to have early action. We can't afford to sit on our hands. The climate target, 25% reduction by 2030, that leaves us roughly seven and a half to eight years to get that reduction so that we can, we don't, we're not hit with further reductions and further, further limits on agriculture. We have a wide range of technologies ready to go. It's our job to test the technologies, even technologies that are brought in that we've, we've, we've heard about from our research college, colleagues all over the world. Try them and test them in Ireland to see do they work. 
move them out onto some test farms to see practically do they work and then for you and uh, to adopt them and to support you adopt them through the advisory service that's our role and our mission as Chagas I'd say don't delay as a challenge here from the first stand at the open day here today I'd say for every farmer here to go home with five technologies that you've identified from the open day that you're going to try to adopt on your farm in 2023 and 2024. You could have one or two of those technologies already in the bag, things like Lyman soils. You could be already doing it, chalk that down, pick four more. If you're using protected urea, there's another one. If you're using clover or starting to think about clover in 2024, given the high fertilizer prices, this multi-species sward we're operating that on around 75 kilos per hectare of nitrogen for the whole year, compared with the ryegrass sward where we're putting on 200 kilos. Talk to Aidan and the guys below at the Livestock Village. They have three years of production on those swards, producing the same milk solids, or on the dairy beef side where John is working over there, producing the same meat meat quality maybe even a couple of weeks earlier those those heifers in particular are, are, are fatter and a little bit ahead of their correspondent uh, group that's on on ryegrass only for 65 kilograms of nitrogen so there is opportunities there to de-risk your business ask plenty of questions we're running this open day for ye as farmers and for the industry to to impart the knowledge so the experts are there on the technologies in the villages that Karen has outlined. Ask plenty of questions, go home informed and go home with five things under your belt that you're going to take on next year. And don't forget, we as a research organisation, it's our job to find out what's next. What else can we bring to the party? What new technologies are out there from across the world? To bring them back here, test them in research centres like Johnstown Castle road test them then out on farms, on, on, on monitor farms or through the signpost fo program farms who the farmers will be talking on some of the stands there as kind of testimonials today and you know we will need more technologies into the future to make our farms fit for the challenges that are coming down the road so with that before we take some questions I'd like to wish you the very best for 2023 a good happy and healthy farming business into the next year and we'd be happy, Karen and I'd be happy to take any questions that you have at this point.